There we go. Yeah. Yes, sir. What's up, my dog? How you feeling, my brother? I'm doing good, man. It's Saturday. I did a half day today. Man. You got me off the hook today. I didn't have to work the whole day. Oh, that's good. <laughs> hey, half days are always good days. <laughs> How are you, brother? Hey, man, I, two feet above ground, my brother. I'm good. I'm good. You know, living day by day, brother. Awesome. <laughs> Shoot. Man, first and foremost, thank you for having, you know, the time, blessing us with the time. You know, we got we got greatness in the house today, tonight. <laughs> man, I appreciate you, man. It's it's beautiful to be able to come on here today and talk to you. You know, we used to do a lot of things like this about a year ago and back. So <laughs> things like this kind of remind myself of the good old days a year ago and back. Yeah. And uh, that things are starting to open back up again, man. So it's yes, good to sir. see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I tell you one thing. I told, I'm going to tell Walt, we're going to find our way over there, man, you know, visit you, check out the restaurant, you know what I'm saying? I, I already told my wife, and she was like, she was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. I was like, yeah, we got celebrity. I'm going to go get, see, you know, see his food, try it out, give it a shout out, you know, the whole nine. Well, here's this thing now. See, now, by the end of this talk, you and me are going to be like this. I already know that. Oh, absolutely. So <laughs> I have this thing now for family members and mm -hmm. people on the level of like where we are going to be. When you land, I either bring you food when I pick you up or I take you immediately for some food. <laughs> like, cause you know, you just build up a hunger when you when you get off of a flight. It's like, why are you so damn hungry when you get off a flight? You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, we can, we can hook you right up, buddy. Man, hey, you know what? I'm thankful. I'm thankful, and um, you know, I'm I'm the same way. Where I'm gonna be bringing, I'm gonna be bringing you some hot gear. You know, what I'm saying because, you know, you give, I give. This is something that you know, every, life should be about. Life should really be about. It's all about giving. You know, man, so. you got some nice gear. I've been checking out that gear. That latest, um, some oh. cool shirt you just posted. I saw it. The last <laughs> post you just did. That, Savage. Savage time. Yeah. Oh man, I got my eye on that one. <laughs> you know, it's funny because real quick, I will, I had did a um cuz I've been slacking on the men apparel. I've been giving the ladies too much attention. I've been spoiling them a it's bit, okay. you know. It's okay. You have to. <laughs> so, I was like, "Man, let me I said, "Man, my, the men apparel looking a little looking a little low." So, I was like, <laughs> start thinking of some things and I said, "Man, savage time. Yeah, let me get the, you know, the men's uh a cut off, it was a sleeveless racer back for, you know, for the gym, for the working out. And um, posted that. And then more women were like, we need to get that in a bundle set. <laughs> I was like, eh, maybe. And then one one of my friends was like, no, do that right now. I want it. <laughs> so that's what, that's the last post you saw. <laughs> I just posted that up and was like. Hey, bro, you got to keep it true to the values. Ladies first. And yeah. that will always stay. So you, you displayed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I appreciate, appreciate. So, you know, and, um, you know, just to hear that, you know, you got your eye on that and just the, the latest stuff be between Walt's creation on the, on the designs, all power to Walt, because he's the one that oh, created the design. Genius. Yeah. My genius brother who knows how to project anything onto anything. Yeah. Oh, it's the truth. It is the truth. Cause, cause I, I thought before I met him, I thought the logo designs that I made were like, oh man, this was hot. This was great. Man, he showed me something. I was like, I looked at my old stuff. I was like, oh, that's crap. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, I'm bringing you in. <laughs> So. He likes to blow people's minds. He, he he loves doing that for his friends, man. He'll he he got me good ones. He's like, hey, like I thought he was doing, you know, just just some kind of a <laughs> like a poster for me, you yeah. know, that he was gonna send. Me. Oh, cool. No, no, no. Then he tells me to turn on UFC Fight Night. Yeah. Won't put me on where they get all buttered up before they go in. Yeah. The mat, the sweat mat. Yeah. Won't put me on the oil mat. <laughs> My face. <laughs> Oh, Walt, I love him, man. <laughs> Walt is funny. Well, man. <laughs> Walt, there he is. I see him. Yeah, Walt is the man. Walt is the man. Matter of fact, I think I can add Walt on here, too. I really think I can do it. I'm going to see if I can try to do that real quick. Cause that would be amazing stuff. to get Mr. Walt on here because he's yeah. always the man behind the scenes. Nobody yeah. ever sees the man with the magic. Yep, yep. I'm going to see if I can get him on. Because <laughs> I've, I've been seeing a lot of people 
have like four people in the group chat. I'm like, oh man, I didn't know we could do that. So if he if he picks up <laughs> and not be scared, <laughs> we're gonna get him. <laughs> but I think Walt is watching us right now. He might be popping on here soon. That'd be great to have Walt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely on. I know his his ass is on. <laughs> True, but. But, you know, again, like I said, so I want to get back on to you because, you know, the real talk, the show is about is motivation, inspiration, right? Yeah. And I feel like with COVID all last year and still this year, hey, there's Walt. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> I, I see your glasses. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's all you're getting. <laughs> that's all right. I knew he was doing that on purpose. I knew it. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we have the mystery man Walt <laughs> behind the scenes. There um, he is. <laughs> yeah, the man, the myth, the legend of all What's the designs. Up? We got him on here, here too, so he's just as part of the team, <laughs> you know, as yep, we all are. <laughs> Walt, you know, Walt usually assembles the team. That's what I notice. He brings everyone together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that looks good on you. That red. See, I didn't even do a red, red, uh, black on for me. That looks nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. And see, all his, all his artwork. Yeah, you know, I praise him for that. This is, this we would never, we wouldn't be nowhere near where we at if it wasn't for Walt. I, 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 I say it all the time, man. You know, he's all the designs. Everything. This is this is the man who creates it all in five minutes. <laughs> Very talented man we have right here on the screen with us. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So we're gonna jump in, Mr. Vegas, land of Vegas. For those who don't know. This is the man that is very inspiring from what the some of the things that I've read and you know what you read don't give you the full details, you know what I'm saying? It's different hearing it from the person. Um from what I've read is you know your journey to where you at is very inspirational and I would like for us to touch on that because a lot of people don't know don't know what you endured to get where you at. Some people think, you know, oh, you know, you're in Vegas, you must have already you know, been put on the pedestal, you know, like, nah, this man started from the low, low and worked his way up. So, please, you got the floor, Mr. Vegas. Get, let, let the people know who you are and how did you become where you at today? All right, back to ground zero. So, you know, <laughs> coming from an ethnic family, you know, Italian family, they were they were strict back in my day. For for my age group, we we caught the end of the you know possibly the nun teachers that gotcha, mm. you know the the hardcore you know this is what you're eating for dinner. Right. Um, they didn't let me out much. You know, knew how to roll a meatball before I knew how to ride a bicycle. That's wow. that's the truth. Um, you know, five six years old, they they didn't let us much. You know, they didn't let us out much yet. Yeah. So. You know, it it wasn't a bad thing. It was an overprotective thing. You know, not like they were mean or anything, but they just kept us in the house more. Right, right. So in that house, you know, there there's a lot of good things going on, a lot of daily rituals for, you know, the people of the house, especially the grandmothers and the mothers. Yeah. Cooking meals almost every day, you know, back when going out and eating was a treat or even having a TV dinner was a treat. Okay. So you know, they're always cooking and them being so tough, but so sweet at the same time. Yeah. You know, they, they would make you help them or, or you would be interested in wanting to help them, right. you know, where, you know, you're, you're five years old, rolling them up for grandma. <laughs> she used to make this lasagna where she made like 200 little meatballs. It was exactly 200. And she put wow. little meatballs between the layers. So when you cut it, you saw the meatballs in the lasagna. Wow. So anyway, so, you know, that being embedded in you in your developmental stage mm -hmm. of growth in your foundation as it's hardening right. um when you get older and it's time to work like eventually it is time to work like you, <laughs> you're gonna stop if you don't work yeah so you know and then having you know being a young dad it, it's like you know knowing my values i knew it was time to get to work yeah and it's like what do i do so I tried all kinds of crazy jobs, you know what I mean? Like, like I, 
I went to a construction company, sweeping hair to hair salon, like just you know, all different kinds of stuff. And then when it was time to get really serious for the job job, I knew, you know, I wasn't a kitchen guy yet, but I knew I came from a kitchen environment right not the same as the commercial kitchen environment but but the home kitchen environment with mom and grandma and all these people definitely so i was like all right nobody's gonna hire me with no experience and knowing how to make a good meatball and a nice red sauce (laughs) you know and a few of the other things in the house so what i did was is i started out as a dishwasher and i knew at the least that's going to get you in the kitchen environment like you're you're at least that is your only entry with the experience I had into the kitchen that one, you know, would want to go in and experience. So gotcha. going into the dishwasher, I, you know, I had a good work ethic and um, I was such a good dishwasher. I, I felt into a weird spot where they wouldn't promote me into like a prep job because I was too good at washing dishes. A okay. couple of times they tried to promote me and, and it didn't work out so well because then the dish room went to hell and it was like, <laughs> Hey, go back into the dish room. I'm like, well, I'm glad I'm good at washing dishes as this is what's slowing me down <laughs> right now. But at least I'm good. And at least I'm earning my dollar. So, you know, to make a long story short, you know, starting out as a dishwasher, Every now and then, they they let you chop a little bit of parsley, and you know <laughs> you get to use that knife. Not not the way you butter your toast at home knife, but right. the beginning of that. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. The beginning of being able to cut something and look away at someone and make them very nervous when you're talking to them. <laughs> you wind up developing that. But so you know, I wound up leaving that place okay. and the little bit that I picked up in the prep from being a dishwasher, because in a lot of places, uh, you know, in a lot of real places, uh, a lot of the dishwashers jump on prep, you know, because yeah. those guys don't want to wash dishes. They want yeah. to better their career yeah, and they want yeah. to learn. The next month. So they're like, yeah, give me, give me the case of vegetables. Let's do it. So that's where I got my experience to be able to go to my next job where I was more of a, um, more of a, prep person okay. and then worked in the pantry and put the desserts together and all that. And as I went on, um, without going to culinary school or working for a famous chef, um, you know, not, not having the privilege of being a reflection of anyone and, and developing their knowledge that they would, you know, put on you. Right. I worked so many different jobs around town before things got serious as a cook where I started going up a notch on the next job on the next job i would get a job stay there for a year absorb all the knowledge and then move on to the next job because you would always hit the ceiling yeah. like that was it like you could you know they saw you wet behind <laughs> the ear you, know, you ain't gonna be no executive chef in that establishment because they they watched you grow yeah. you know you got you got out of it but now you got to start fresh with the knowledge you have and put behind you what you didn't know and put forward what you do know. Right. So I kept doing that for a few years. And, um, you know, it, it built such a nice career for me because as I went to the next job, yeah, I was, you know, knowledgeable and ready. Like I knew what I was taking with me from the previous job and they didn't see my learning curves. They just saw, mm-hmm. you know, who they had had in front of them. Got so it. I did that for very many years until I was able to start grabbing some of these chef titles. Right. You know what I mean? Low level chef titles, like like even before sous chef, like like maybe kitchen manager, okay, um, assistant kitchen manager, and then like maybe assistant chef, and then sous chef. But somehow, in a crazy way, in a twenty year span, um, going back about nine years ago, okay. you know, not in the last nine years. I worked my way up from a dishwasher. Okay. Held just about every culinary chef's position from dishwasher, cook, line cook, um, steak cook, which is a broiler cook, pantry, yeah. prep, saucier, and then and then I move on to these entry level chefs positions where you take on a lot of this responsibility. And then at this point you have the choice. Do you want to excel? Do you want to stay where you're at? Do you want to just right. do it for the money? Or do you wanna, you know, a guy like me who, you know, the only thing we had was good people that were tough that that taught you how to keep going. Nobody ever dropped anything in my lap. Yeah. You know, they didn't 
they didn't give me the house, but they gave me the tools to build it kind of, kind of scenario. Definitely. And, and so what winds up happening is I get to a certain point where I'm an executive chef now, where I can make my own decisions. This is like 20 years later. Right. Um, a good, a good 10 ish years ago where now I'm on the strip, I'm a chef at a restaurant on the strip, but now like, now that I'm not working with the masses and I'm my own individual where I got to really come out and be myself and, and who I am and what I do, yeah. because you get to display that as being the executive chef of a restaurant where you build up a fan base, people like your food, you build up your confidence, yeah. you're running special, seeing how many you could sell, you know <laughs> what I mean? Seeing how people like it, you know, you're, you're, you, here you are starting off as a dishwasher many years ago, but now you're doing the rounds at a restaurant when things slow down and people are going, chef, we love your specials. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and now it's okay. So what winds up happening is now, all right, my culinary resume is starting to get very solid. Like it, it's, it's great, but I felt there was more out there. You know, I had right. a little bit of a different personality and in the 10 year ago, 12 year ago range, there wasn't, many people like me on like the food channels, like the food network and all that stuff. You right. know, I fear he may have had like one or two tattoos, but there was no tatted up people with attitude. And, yeah. You know, it's there wasn't big. anything like that. There wasn't nothing like that yet. So I felt, okay. I come from my mother and my grandmother, you know, like their heart and soul of the cooking and everything that they showed me. Yeah. And it's like, I develop into this executive chef type figure. Then I wind up throwing my personality into it, identifying <laughs> myself. I'm like, you know what? There isn't a person like me doing what I'm doing out there right now in, in the massive public eye. Yeah. So I'm like, I really feel I need to get out there with my cuisine and my journey and, you know, what I'm doing. Because at this point, I was always upset that I was never – taught by one of these very famous known chef guys. Yeah. But then I said, it's a blessing because no offense against anybody who's ever been taught by a professional chef, bless them because that was meant to be that they cross paths with that chef. But right. I was never a reflection of any other chef and it allowed me to figure things out on my own and be my own personal individual when it came to being a chef. Right. So here we are, man. Now it's time to try out for some of these shows, you know, like yeah. back was the next Food Network star. It was a reality show where, you know, it was like the real world. They throw everybody in a house together. Okay. And um, <laughs> everybody's shanking each other in the gut. <laughs> trying to be the, you know, the one that wins the show. And it was the craziest thing I had ever seen. But what that did was, is as I had mentioned to you earlier, I never went to culinary school. Yeah. Made up for a lot in the 12 weeks that I was on there. I made it to the end. I made it to the last episode. I didn't win, but it gave me 12 weeks of exposure on Food Network, you know, 10 years ago. And that was like the big heyday of the Food Network. So yeah. what that did is, is it really jump-started my career into going on to other things. You know, that's when the Chopped came, the NBC Food Fighters. Yeah. Late night fight, got to host a show with Leila Ali, oh. you know. So now I started building up my like hosting chops and, you know, TV chef chops. Yeah. So now I'm doing so much chef TV. Uh, I'm not <laughs> doing so much chef work now, and I'm doing more chef TV work right now. And then as a professional, no longer working as a chef in a kitchen, I now became corporate chef, and I decided to um, link up with the food distribution companies. Um, back in the day, it was U.S. Food that yeah. I worked for. Now for the last, I'm going on almost five years, I worked for Nicholas and Company, which is a family-owned, full broadline distributor. And I actually, besides owning the restaurants, I work for the company that sells the food to the restaurants that turns it into their creations to sell to the public. Damn. So all aspects of the business now, man. I'm <laughs> even, you know, I'm even working with the guys that get the food to the restaurant doc so yeah. they can turn it into their creations. So... I learned so much as a chef. I got to do all the chef TV stuff. Then I was blessed enough, you know, Taffer gave me a shot at Bar Rescue. Um, it originally was that I had owned a restaurant and I was on the Bar Rescue radar for Taffer to come do Bar Rescue okay. at my restaurant. <laughs> and I spoke to John a few times already before that. And I said, John, how am I on your radar? I go around and I, I help people fix things. I'm like, why, why am I on the bad list? He goes, no, <laughs> It's just they scout and they look at, you know, restaurants and they just see what's going on. And then so 
Taffer goes, you're right, man. He's like, let, he's like, chill out. Let me, let me, let me see what I can do. And then like three days later, somebody from Bar Rescue called me and that was how I got onto Bar Rescue. Taffer actually put me on there himself and I was going to be a victim of the rescue. But then he decided to bring me along with him on the journey. And then that's how I got into that from cracking eggs and wearing an, a sweater on Food Network to kicking doors down and putting people in line that are doing terrible things and horrible things. <laughs> So we've come full circle in this industry, man. And now, you know, right now, COVID knocked a lot of stuff out. You know, I was I was slated for so many bar rescues. I was actually on the way to one before, um, like, they said, don't even, like, come here. <laughs> Go yeah. home. We're not going to do this for a while. So, you know, besides building your restaurants that you will see profits from one day in the future after you pay them off, because it takes a lot to put some of these restaurants down, like the two I have, no. you got to work, you gotta you gotta keep your job you gotta you gotta have a boss you gotta humble yourself because you're out there and so many people look up to you and you're known as a professional that people depend on but you still gotta punch a clock and you still got a boss that you gotta look at and go yes sir what do you need so it's you do what you gotta do for your family but it grounds you to you know own restaurants be on tv but still have someone you gotta answer to because in this answering to you're contributing to a winning situation of a family-owned operation that Nobody talks about, you know, they talk about the restaurants and everybody that went down from COVID, but they don't talk about nobody paid the food distribution company that financed the food for the restaurants. Yeah. So it's a whole layer of, you know, somebody else that nobody even heard of getting hurt by it. And there was just so much like just kapoof with the COVID that yeah. we just held on to what we had. We stuck together. My company kept us employed during COVID when they didn't have to. And, um, you know, that was the only thing I had during COVID, you know, and, and if it wasn't for my job, I don't know what to say during these crazy times because we had to close things down. My other restaurant wasn't open yet and you didn't know what was going to happen. So we closed our eyes, we pushed through it. We built a restaurant. Um, somehow we, you know, it, it kept me closer to my things that I had out here that I probably should have spent more time on. It got me in a, in a different situation in my job where we're, you know, still trying to identify what a chef would do now in these times that was so physical and so, you know, so upfront and there with customers where you couldn't even let no one in the building. Yeah. You know, we still don't know how we kept everybody employed during all of this. And we just, we take what we have now and we try to rebuild and that's what we are, man. We're in a rebuild mode where, you know, we're not looking at so much what we don't have. We're looking at what we do have. And I, I, I see it all coming back. I see, I see a lot of people that were down standing back up again and yeah. I'm starting to feel really good because I see it all. I'm a restaurant operator. So I saw that I'm in food distribution. I saw that. And I'm in production that went to nothing, and I saw and felt that. So that's why I praise everybody that hung in there through this whole thing. And, you know, I know the world will never be the same again. But, like, if we can just go on with the theory of let's not look at what we don't have, let's not look at what we lost, let's look at what we do have, and let's see how we can build on to that. Definitely. You know, and go that way. Definitely. Amen, bro. Wow. <laughs> Woo! That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm inspired. Shit. I'm about to keep my job and continue this. <laughs> no, that's real. Keep that's your job, man. That's think real. about it. If you, if you think about this, okay, people get confused. They're like, you work, but you own restaurants and you're on TV. I'm like, but what I do for work, one, I need my job because I got to take care of my family. Yeah. You know, when, when I got, when you see a bunch of restaurants one day, Maybe I won't, but right now, it's my job. It's it's actually a chapter of my education. Think about this. As yeah. a chef, I'm in food distribution. I get to see all these French fries next to each other and what's the difference and what the code skews are on a French fry. What makes a chicken finger a chicken tender or a chicken finger? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> all these unnecessary things that I never thought I'd need to know. I do now. And when I go around helping people and it's time for them to sit down with their food vendor on who they're going to buy food from. Okay. I know what they need to be talking to them about. Definitely. It helped me get people there faster because I know the other end of it. Quick little example, like the vegan food. Yeah. I don't know nothing about vegan food two years ago. And if I didn't work in food distribution and 
practice on vegan food and see yeah. all this vegan food that they were selling, test it, make stuff out of it. Yeah. Man, I wouldn't know, you know, how good it was. Definitely. So it gives me a head start to test things in the test kitchens to not only help myself make it good for my establishments, but our customers, especially to help them see the light on things that they might not have even wanted to, um, you know, dabble into yet yeah definitely. anyway enough with all that man how no, are you <laughs> no that's first of all that all that's amazing i mean that's it's truly is, is inspiring because like i said you you yeah. stay grounded like you said i kept hearing you say stay grounded stay humble you not most people you hear them say it but their actions don't show it so just knowing that and seeing that and hearing that from you it means a lot and apparently sidebar we got a lot of damn questions for you 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 popular <laughs> let's go man so, it's my pleasure to answer some questions so so i'm we're gonna do a little sidebar no moment from the from the the the, the story um one of the one somebody by the name of lady lady dollar white lady dollars white i'll probably say that whole wrong but she says where dolores does, dolores dolores okay lady dolores white I apologize. I'm bad with names. You gotta have to tell people it's gotta okay. tell names. <laughs> I'm bad. She says, "Where does your ideas or inspiration come from in creating your menus for your restaurants?" Okay, so part of it. And now, there's a few few factors to this. A few elements that equals what I do. One, it has to do with my journey. Um, I was on such a journey in my life where I lived in New York until I was 14, and then I moved to Vegas. So I've been pretty much from coast to coast. And a lot of my food comes from what my mother and grandmother used to feed me, that beautiful comfort. A lot that I experienced where I lived in the first 14 years of my life, New York, such a melting pot. I had so many different things around me. Okay. But then, you know, in my journey of being a cook and working my way up to a chef and some of the things that I learned, it all kind of spins around where it's like a classic Fucking. It's like classic comfort with a modern day twist, and it like tells the story in every plate kind of kind of thing going on. It really just represents me, my journey, what I eat, what I've cooked, you know, just all in one. That's pretty much the best way to answer that. So pretty much, it pretty much when people read your menu, look at your menu, try your food, is pretty much they they're getting a a glimpse of your your journey, your history, your heart, your your your, your backstory, basically. <laughs> yep, when you eat in either one of the shops, like even, like, so I don't do any fine dining right now. Right now I'm into the casual. You know, I got Sinful Subs, which is my East Coast heart, but like Vegas soul, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, sub shop. And then I got Black and Blue Diner, which is like, like the Jersey Diner, like took off yeah. and like flew to Vegas and just like landed. <laughs> Stopped in the south real quick, grabbed a few good things from down there, and then came to Vegas. So it's it's really like it's it's me, you know, it's, it's me on a plate. It's it's my journey, where I've lived, what I love, what I've consumed, what I've created. I just I try to stay true to who I am when it comes to my food, even if it's the most simplest thing. Man, that's dope. That's dope. I'm look, I'm hungry. <laughs> like, I hope we answered Dolores' question. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that you know answered her question. I, I hope, I hope that that definitely sounded that that sounds so so true. Like I say, like some people who get into cooking, like I, my wife, she's a big big fan. I mean, of uh, what's the sh what's the show? Um, Gordon Ramsay, Hell's Kitchen. Oh yeah, Master Chef. She watches that faithfully from. The beginning, she rewatches the season, and you know when I, she got me into watching it. And the more I hear some of the people, they they say the same thing. Like you get well, some of them, you can tell some of them who are just trying to say for TV and their food reflects like they be BSing. <laughs> and then you got the ones who really do mean what they say, and they're like, wow, this. I hear the I hear Chef Ramsey say it. Um, uh, and the few other judges, they'd be like, this is you on the plate. So. The reference that you make, I you know, I definitely believe that. I definitely believe that. Cause I cause I peeped at some of your food um on your Instagram, your pictures, and I was like, and now having you on the show and telling me like your story and this is you on the play, I can see it. It matches perfectly. So 
Yeah. That, that's amazing. Try to stay true, man. Try to try to just identify yourself through your product, man. So when people are eating it, they know you created it. It makes sense with what they know of you. Or it maybe it gives an opportunity for them to want to find out a little bit more about you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, When's is the prime time burger uh, coming out? Yeah. <laughs> As soon as I get down, because we were supposed to do a few things down by where Walt lives. And then, of course, you know what has stopped everything in the last year. Primetime Burger, Walt, we're going to create that together. I need you in the room for that one. <laughs> Shoot. I'm excited. Call me when it's time. Call me. <laughs> Shoot. We got second question. D. Hugh. Is that, does that name sound familiar? D. Hugh. Uh, Biner, ADA? Yeah. Okay, so Dottie Hubner, yes, Dottie Hubner, D. Hubner. Um, Dottie Hubner, I know her from North Carolina. Very good friend of mine. Um, I, I, Before COVID, I opened a restaurant for someone down in North Carolina, and I am the executive chef of a restaurant in North Carolina, too. I go down there once a month. I haven't for a year, but okay. Dottie, Dottie is right there with me. Good friend of mine. When will I be back in the North Carolina? Dottie, I don't know. I hope soon. I miss it because... I leave on a Friday night. I come back on a Monday morning. I miss no work. And I have this weekend getaway where I go to this very peaceful place called Edenton, North Carolina, two and, two and a half hours away from Raleigh, where I just, I'm, I'm restaurant on the water where I get to be Chef Vic instead of sandwich maker Vic, corporate Chef Vic, or diner Vic. I actually get to be the Chef Vic that got me all of the above. And I get to just make some of the greatest food down there in North Carolina. So, Dottie, we're working on it. Um, my partner, Rose, down there um, that I own the diner with down here that owns that restaurant down there. That's how we met. She's going to let me know soon when everybody is going to be able to come back in and get your prime rib and seafood and all that good stuff. Sounds good. Sounds good. Hopefully that answers your Love question. You, um, but uh, this is this one for a a what is that a question? This is a statement from my man Walt. <laughs> this is for our, from my boy G Baby. <laughs> he said, "Make sure you have the Armani loafers on when you come up with the the burger." Got <laughs> <laughs> oh, the loafers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's always, brother. Story. Listen, I always got the docs on. I'm a Doc Martens guy, all different colors. I'm I'm nuts like that. Yeah. I'll do the bright yellows for you, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who who was the next question we got. Uh, okay, one is from um, B Mackin B Mackina twenty six or McKenna B Mac. It came to 26. Um, Vic, from all the restaurants you have owned, is there a certain dish that is your favorite? Certain dish that is my favorite? You know, I got to tell you, it's funny. Like, I still eat ground level, you know? Like, don't get me wrong. I love some of your greatest steakhouses in the country, but my favorite thing when I was a kid um, in New York, East Coast, it was a Kaiser roll with two pieces of bacon, two slices of American cheese, two fried eggs, a few potatoes on there. And it was like the classic New York breakfast sandwich on a Kaiser roll. I purposely put that on the black and blue diner menu. I eat it like every other week. And that is my <laughs> favorite thing on earth. I want one right now. <laughs> that sounds, damn, y'all making me hungry. Like shit, that sounds yeah, good. That's the whole idea, man. That's our job. That's what damn. we got to do. <laughs> I'm not mad at all. And that was actually from Brian. As I said, they said, Vic, it's me, Brian. So Nice, Brian. Good guy. So, no, okay. Brian. Okay. So this one, Stacy B098, what is the sexiest meal to make? <laughs> <laughs> the sexiest meal to make <laughs> at the diner. Let's see. At the diner, at the sub shop in North Carolina. <sighs> The sexiest meal to make. I'm going to say my tapas. I, I get down with my tapas, my small plates. Okay. Because I got these, I got these big, ugly hands. And, like, <laughs> when you see me with the tweezers and the oils and, you know, all these crazy items I made to make a plate look like, you know, a work of art. Yeah. A lot of people don't expect that of me that don't know me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. some some lady told me, she goes, you're the guy with the sandwiches. I'm like, hey, I'll take that. You're right, right. Sure, absolutely. 
So, you know, I think, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of, um, I'm going to say one of the sexiest dishes I make. It's a caviar on top of a scallop with a quail egg and um, gold flake corn sauce under it. That's, that's a pretty hot dish. I, first of all, that, again, sounds amazing. I didn't even know any of those ingredients even existed. <laughs> like, like, you said golden syrup? <laughs> like damn no, gold foil like yeah no like you make a broth and then and then you put the gold foil in it and this is when we get the tweezers out you know <laughs> we, we start getting all these cool little chef toys out where we we show that we have some etiquette even though you know we look a little botched up okay we, we have a lot of etiquette in there a lot of finesse in the chef in the chef game okay 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 shoot i'm definitely all right let's see What's my next vacation? Shoot, Walt, we we flying to Vegas, man. We gonna wear three Done. masks and hop over. <laughs> That's it. Wait. Oh, <laughs> um, let's see. What was one more question? One more question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dolores again. <laughs> what is your favorite bar rescue? Oh, my favorite bar rescue. You know, I'm gonna give two answers on this. There's okay. a favorite one to watch. And then there's a favorite one I did. Okay. Of course, my favorite one I ever did was the first one I ever did because I made it to Bar Rescue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wanted to be on TV all these years as a chef, and here I am on TV now as a professional being called by John to, you know, regulate a situation. The Houston Sports Hub episode one for me was my favorite Bar Rescue to do. But I'm going to say my favorite Bar Rescue to ever watch, I wasn't on it. Okay. It's a great show. It, like, it wasn't one that I did. Right. You know, I don't, maybe some people would be like, well, the one I did. No, yeah. it was the one where there was like a mushroom growing out of a wall in a walk in cooler. Like, like they, they moved the thing and there was, there was a big fungus just sticking out of the wall. And it was really true. It was growing behind the wall and the wall was starting to get a lump in it. <laughs> and then they remove it, and this big mushroom just, like, hangs down like like a prop joke fake mushroom, but it was real. I'm going to uh, say that one. The uh, mushroom episode, Dolores, definitely. That's, that's fucking gross. <laughs> that's fucking gross. <laughs> yeah. That is terrible. That makes you – look, if and for when, oh, you know, for whenever restaurants open up, that's going to make me want to look at the corners of all these damn, like, <laughs> like these restaurant walls and make me want to inspect the kitchen. Well, this is in I a cooler, it. man. This is in cool. their uh, walk-in refrigerator. Yeah, like, John was like, why is there a bulge in the wall? And I, I guess <laughs> that's... it was like this big. It was like, the, it was like the size of your wrist and hand. That's fucking gross. That's gross. But, you know, it, yeah. it's crazy because some people just don't, People just don't care. Like you selling this food, you selling all the, all these different types of food in these environments for people that's paying you money, and this you hear it all the time. And people just don't. Some of these people just don't really give a damn. Like you will have mold or or it'd be like rats. I think it's, I seen somewhere that people was like rats that had died in there and they didn't know and they still was cooking. It's like. Like, y'all don't have no pride <laughs> in... Well, you you got to understand, you know, some people are in the business and they have a lot of pride because, you know, they have major goals in regards to the business that they have. Yeah. And then some people either inherit it, walk into it, was stuck with it, you know? So we don't know what the backstory is until we get there. And mm. in most cases, when you have that, all those weird bugs and this and that, it had something to do with a dark cloud over the place where, you know, like, it wasn't like, I'm going to own all these bars one day and I'm going to take good care of my family. And I'm going it, to, it's not that like they're yeah. on a different, it's like, it's not a career. It's just a job kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and you could see that. Yeah. You can see the difference between the two. Like they were, I guess. Yeah, cause I've seen that with uh, many many of these shows. They they did it because their family did it. They want they have inspiration or admirations for something else, and you know it's something that they they're just stuck doing and they don't want to. And it, it shows. It's crazy. It shows people for anybody who for all the people that's listening, watching, them, love what you do. <laughs> like seriously, love what you do. Love what you do. If you don't like, you it, have love to. It. Yeah. 
if you don't love it, your actions are going to show. You can't hide it for long. It's going to show. As yeah. you have to be obsessed with it, love it, cherish it. Like this is you, because <laughs> uh. yeah. Oh, and man. then make it yours. You know, once once it is you, take it and make it yours. You know, you could be cookie cutter and do things like everybody else, but I think the reason why. I'm getting as far as I am, and I still got ways to go. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm here. My goals are here. I started here. My goals are here, and I'm about here. I still got a lot more stuff that I got to go yeah. out there and, and grab. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, but make it yours, seriously. And, like, being yourself and being true to who you are with whatever it is you display in your artwork, whether it's your sandwich or your painting, that's how you're going to get it because you're going to identify yourself as who you are and it's going to separate you from the rest, not to be better than anyone, but the level of being unique. You want right. to be your own unique self. Definitely, definitely. Man, that's, that's, that's deep. And hopefully a lot of people take, take that with them because, again, COVID, before COVID, you know, people I feel like was just living. They just lived life. They were just, li they were just living as the day came, you know, and – they woke, some of them, they, they will wake up, go to work, come home. That was it. No, I mean, nothing wrong with that, but it was like, there's more to life than just that, you know? Sure. And then COVID hit, everybody is in the panic, everything shut down. And like you said earlier, COVID, and same for me, COVID pretty much forced us to take a step back, a breather, and look at what was important so kind of like COVID was almost like a blessing in a sense like because it's like damn right let me spend I'm so called up in here because I have to do this but I really don't have to do it I can do this still make a living oh I got all this time spending with my friends my family you know what I'm saying that of what you took for granted before COVID so you know just to just to hear you know have you on like I said, like I said again to have you on to tell people and hopefully people will take something from this and it's like do what you want do 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 it with full throttle 100 percent effort and love it if you don't love it stop it and get rid of it <laughs> you know right and yep. and, and live live this life because <laughs> you know people's going to tell you what you can and cannot do first of all i'm gonna say excuse my french F you, <laughs> you know, because who are you? You're not God. You can't tell me what I can and not do. You know, if I can think it and I believe it, then shit, I'm going to do it, <laughs> you know? So, right. you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. So your story, like I said, your story come from the ground of family-oriented, you know, cooking, got the skill sets, you know, that the seed was planted early. And then... You went from, like I said, you went up the ranks. You climbed up the ranks. And this, like you said, this was not, you know, in a short amount of time of a month, two months, three months. This was years of dedication, um, yeah. consistent. And um, my question for you is what kept you going? Like what, because, you know, some people, they have a goal, but they don't know how long it'll take them to get that goal, right? Sure. And they don't have, they don't have, no one has the idea of the things that they will endure reaching that goal. So once they start, they get hammered, 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 and they're like, oh my God, doubts, second thoughts, questioning themselves. What made you keep going? Like what drove you to stay on, you know, on the course and stay focused and achieve where you at? And I know you said, you know, Right now, where you at isn't the end goal. You still got more. What's way more? Yeah. What's keeping you going? What's keeping you driven? You know, with all the bullshit that comes with it, what keeps what's keeping you driven? You know what? It, it's that's a great question. You know, your mind plays tricks on you. You're human. If, if your mind doesn't play tricks on you, then you're not human. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and you gotta your biggest competition is yourself first and foremost. There are so many times I did not want to do this anymore. You yeah. know, I even I even have days now where there's certain things I'm doing where it's like, should I, I? But you get hit so hard, and like you you do fail within this. Like you you do feel like you're losing. 
it, it's yeah. like somebody like trying to be something in Hollywood. Somebody tr- like this is a fail so many times before you do it, you know, type type thing. So you absorbed failure. Yeah. You know what I mean? You absorbed failure. You went through the failure, the fear of failure, failing, and then going back to the failure and going, like we said earlier, don't look at what you don't have. Look at what you do have. Yeah. And we look at Walt, man. What are you <laughs> yeah. doing? Walt. Walt. <laughs> That's, That's uh, corporate Vic. Uh, corporate Vic. Uh, corporate man. Look. Thank you, Walt. <laughs> who invited him today i had to yeah that's the man right there <laughs> oh here we go there you go <laughs> yo yo that's a lot of swag right there man that's definitely a different <laughs> chef man that's a different style chef it's, it, it's that it's that wolf that likes to put you in magazines hey i'm gonna put you in a magazine when tomorrow what you need photos tonight okay <laughs> Yo, I'm crying. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. What are you thinking here? <sighs> Honey, for your thoughts. Uh, who owe, somebody, <laughs> that's, the, that's that look. Somebody owes me. We were just saying, right? I'm thinking, you know, I don't know if I want to do this no more. Um, this, this, this is a little <laughs> crazy right now what they got me doing. I, I feel like, I feel like that picture was like, thinking like, who, who owes me money? Like, <laughs> like I loan. I loan such and such ten dollars. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah. So what we were saying was, you know, you, you, Walt, you're crazy. <laughs> Self doubt. You, you get it a lot. You, you go back to your your mistake that you made, your failure, and like you you pick a few of the pieces out of it. Yeah. And use them as good learning lessons moving forward on where you went wrong to not allow it to happen again. Yeah. You know. Um, a lot of my success today is based off of failure. Okay. Um, you know, taking the lesson learned in the failure, you know, trimming all the fat off and just taking the, the good part. Like you had said, like the blessing side of COVID. Yeah. Not, not saying COVID was a blessing, but there was blessings within, like you referred to, bringing yeah. people closer together for whatever. There, some way, somehow, there are people standing there going, wow, this last year, even though it was terrible, it did the following for me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, but, you know, me with what I'm doing in my career, man, a couple times I didn't want to do this anymore because it is tough. In the culinary industry, you have so many years of very little money and very many people over you yeah. that, you know, where you, your voice really isn't heard until you want your voice to be heard. And yeah. then you finally push through you take your notes, you look at the positives, and then you finally get into that spot where you've absorbed as much knowledge as you possibly could. The first thing I can tell you about now is something that I didn't have the answer to a long time ago. I made sure that was the first thing that I learned. And now what happens is all these things you learned, you now become dependent on to give answers and spread your knowledge. Yeah. So here you are. 20 some odd, you know, 30, 20 some odd, 30 some odd years ago, not feeling like much going throughout these years at times, not feeling like much, but then wait a minute, you have people depending on you right now to help you to help them, you know, get through their day. Like yeah. you're, they're depending on you. Like, like, Hey, come on. I already walked this path. Come, come see where I walked and I'll tell you where not to go. Yeah. So these mistakes that I was probably crying about had my face in the dirt and mm. just felt like it was the worst thing ever. I am so glad most of those things happened. And I never thought that I would say that when they were happening, it, it really has helped my life today so much because right. now I don't, I don't just teach people like school, you know, all the, you know, great things that can happen. I also teach you, you know, what could possibly happen if you took that wrong turn because right. I lived it. Right. So I try to, I try to, you know, not get in the way of people's learning experiences, but if I can benefit anyone in any way and give them a little wind in their sail from the pain and suffering that I have experienced, I would be more than happy to take some of that junk and give it to someone as a positive. Definitely, definitely should. So that's good. And oh, 
one of the one of the things that we do we like to do a lot for the show is I mean the reason behind the show is more so like you said earlier to shine the light on people people who get overlooked people who are doing something whether it's um whether it's a business or trying to get a, a position at an executive job or whatever it could be they get overlooked you know and they have a story everybody has a story to tell and they don't right. get the, they don't get the opportunity so that's what the premise of this show is about like i say and like even i i i tell what this all like what this all the time like like never stop it started off as a little clothing brand but it's growing more than just a brand because it's about giving back. Now, ninety nine nine point nine percent of everything is about giving back. Point one percent is to shine light on people, <laughs> you know. Um, and we, I say all the time, big these big brands out here in this world, <laughs> they don't do that, <laughs> you know. They if they give they give, what's the word I like to say? They 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 give old products as donations. You know, but that's just a write-off check. You know, for, for the you know for the taxes, and then two, nobody can eat or buy groceries with donation of clothes. You know, so that's why. And then so we, you know, every month we donate like money to random people, random struggling people here, get you to get you to tomorrow. You know, and I feel like like you said earlier when you're true and you're you know humble that's what gets you you know further people who are shady yeah. and fake they stay where they're at <laughs> you know some right. some might slip through the cracks but they don't get that far <laughs> so right. you know so it's all yeah. it's all about giving back helping others giving back and that's i feel like what makes the world go round <laughs> people who are selfish yeah. are the ones who cause you know catastrophic you know events i should say <laughs> you know so yeah. so question for you another question because this hopefully this is this question inspires many people because we all you know experienced this before um what would you say for that what you're willing to share with us what is one or how many however many you want to say um trials you know that you had to endure that you overcome in your in your life or your journey okay well no you know it's funny um another part of where i get my fire from to get to the next level in life comes from not being chosen you know like like when i was a kid i tried out for a few of the sports teams think about this before you build your coat of armor <laughs> you know you're being told, you, you know, you're, you're not on that team. You know what I mean? And then the yeah. kids go run off together and, you, you know, you didn't make that team. Yeah. Or, you, you know, you always got the little trophy that everyone else got. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like you never grabbed something and conquered it. You know, yeah. there was, there was a lot of rejection, you know, like when I was a kid, I was overweight for a while. So, yeah. and, you know, and growing up, you know, like cyberbullying right now, it's called cyberbullying right yeah. now. When I was a kid, it was just called bullying. Yeah. And it wasn't over a screen. He was right there. Yeah. <laughs> and he for you after school. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I'm going to say, though, um, getting, getting turned down from promote a big one that hit me, I think in my career, I actually quit becoming a chef for a year. This is, this is needed. I quit becoming a chef for a year. I was working for a Monte Carlo hotel in Las Vegas. Okay. They were owned by Mandalay incorporated circus circus and those guys. Yeah. And from being nothing, I'm finally about to get a promotion in my life okay. going through everything I went through years of, being told I wasn't good and now I'm finally about to get a promotion and then we get bought out by MGM Grand all our executives get let go and all these new executives come in and they have no idea what you've done for the last few years right then all the hard work now this is a theoretical thing this may have just happened to me but this the theory of this will happen to all of us if it hasn't already it's like climbing up the hill 
and you're almost at the top and then you slip and you fall back down it where you feel like somebody pushed your face down that hill. Um, you know, in growing and wanting to be something in life and get promoted and do better for my family and, you know, make my mark on this earth, you know, getting turned down for promotions and actually being told, you you know, you, you just don't cut it. it it's, it's terrible because you, you ran the marathon. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you, you earned it. Like not being okay at something and being told you're not good, that will hurt some. But actually giving your all to, you know, be pretty good at something, but then being told you're not good at something where you get refused for a promotion. Um, but, you know, you, you're pretty much feeling like, like everything that you've put into what you're doing. And this is what I really want everybody to capture. You're trying to become something. You invested all this time and these years into it. And then somebody may come along and pull it out of your hands for a second. That's a bad when you got to stand strong because that can be your fork in the road where you may turn away from what it was that you may have needed to stay on that path to find your victory where you've now been diverted due to a third party interference. Okay. I was diverted by the third party interference. Um, I left the Monte Carlo hotel, um, took my chef's coat off. I didn't quit. I gave my two weeks notice. That, that was one thing, you know, always, that's my advice to everybody. Never, never just leave a job, always properly leave a job. You know, you'll look back on your resume later. Um, but last day I took my, chef's coat off and I left it on the floor in the hallway right by the back door of where people walk out of the hotel and I looked down at the chef's coat that had my name on it and I said never again never again I'm not I'm not doing this anymore I'm not and so I wound up getting a job at a hotel down the way is one of the older hotels called the Sahara as food and beverage. I was no longer a chef and I had a suit on and I was corporate Vic looking dude, <laughs> a little younger in the photo that you showed. And um, here's what happened. I got a suit on, I'm driving a nice car. I'm running a floor in a casino where there's bartenders, cocktail waitresses, you know, I'm going into restaurants and kind of like, you know, telling cooks, you know, expediting food. I'm doing all this stuff. And here's what's happening. Because I let those guys psych me out and I went and got that job. What they took away from me was, was my creativity. A chef is an artist. You know, whatever you do for a living that's career orientated, it's a form of art. You are your own artist in whatever it is you're doing. I let these guys hurt me and stop being a chef. And eight months later, when I'm sitting in the office, bored out of my mind, adding things up and doing numbers, I was getting depressed because I'm not using my creativity and my God-given gifts to better my career, my life, my family's life, and what I do in this journey that I'm on. Yeah. So my advice to everybody is never let anybody divert you from what it is you're doing as far as your eye on the prize. Take a time out and think about it, but don't ever let any human in life get between you and your goal and divert you from the road that you're on. Don't do it. I'm telling you. I walked through those landmines. You know, I took a little break. It was good for me. And that's how I'm going to write it off as a break. Because if I would have never went back to being a chef again, all the things you guys heard about, everything everyone hears about, the bar rescues, the shows, um, you know, the, the food network, you know, the restaurants now, all this crazy stuff that I do. True fact. If I never snapped out of it and found myself again after I walked away from that hotel, None of these things would have ever have happened. All because some guy told me I wasn't good enough. Yeah. Say no more. Hey, it's microphone the, drop. This is the face he made uh, when he left. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's the face I'm going to beat your ass. 
<laughs> that was it. But I walked away and then turned around and gave that look. Like I walked like 20 feet and then I turned around and did that. And then the movie ended. <laughs> Damn, that's good. I like. <laughs> Yo, I gotta make sure I'm careful around Walt. Walt got too much ammunition. Yeah, we Walt's got too much on us. I, Walt, whatever you want, bro. <laughs> you know, everybody's always worried about someone having a picture of you. Well, Walt's got ten of me, so uh, <laughs> whatever you need, Walt. Right. <laughs> Shoo. So, man, thank you for that. That was that that was that was good. I think a lot of people need to hear that. Um, especially. You know, again, everybody's story, everybody has a story. And I will never say, you know, oh, my story is much more than yours or whatever. Because what you had to go through and what you dealt with and how you overcame it is your story, your story alone. And, you know, it made you who you are today um, and it's helping, you know, build you for tomorrow and the future. So, you know, hopefully for everybody who, you know, heard that, you know, they take that with pride and you know they apply it to their own self because you know if anything i mean shoot every day is an opportunity of, you know for anything to happen <laughs> you know and i mean if you if you decide to mope around and sit your ass on the couch and just eat chips and drink and watch tv and netflix then nothing's gonna get done then yeah you're just living in your own misery but you grinding every day and you saying true to yourself and you know you don't put, throw no shade on anybody and you just, you know, keep your eyes on the prize, you know, there's a 100% chance that that of what you want is going to come into fruitation, you know. Um, I got a good friend. He's actually on here named G-Baby. Um, he's been on this hunt and this determined road of getting his pro card in bodybuilding. And I'm Nice. Yeah. And, you know, I've been – my wife. my wife was friends with him first. Then I became friends with him, and then me and him just became cool ever since. And it's like his story, his journey. I mean, I mean, you already know bodybuilding. You getting, you are on stage getting crit critiqued just based off your look compared to everybody else. Oh, you're not big enough. You're not strong enough. You don't have that much more muscle. And then that's I right know. There, you know, while play. while they're on low calorie diets where it would make <laughs> anybody lose, it. and then they're being told they're not good enough. Their glutes are not uh, right. Dude, go yeah. get him, bro. You're gonna take it. Yeah. You're gonna take it. And he's been he's been at this G baby been at this shit for years. I mean, and never stop being get just like you say, be hungrier, 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 fire burning, just keep on going. So anybody and my point is to say anybody can be just like that, have that fire to burn. You just gotta well, I feel like a lot I feel like people just don't they don't believe in themselves. I think that's the first thing. I think that's the first thing that is the issue is a lot of people going back to like what you were saying earlier, um, back in the elementary school or middle school days. Oh, I'm not good enough, you know, too short, too slow. I think that's that negative seed is planted. And a lot of parents, I think there's a lot of parents that also do that. Be like, Oh, you know, you're not good. You know, just, just, you know, you got to be tall. You got to be fast. You know, I think that also plays in your parents are your closest thing of support, you know. So I, I feel like as they get, people get older, that seed grows and it's like, uh, they have no confidence. They don't believe in themselves. They might have a good idea, but they're too afraid to try. And it's like, uh, I'll just do a regular nine to five job because this is what everybody else says that I am good at doing, <laughs> you know. So, right. And um, I feel like for a lot of people, and I'm telling you a lot of people that's listening, believe in yourself. <laughs> people say being cocky yep. is bad. Fuck, man, shit, cocky is good. Be cocky, it's good. <laughs> I, you know, don't be, now don't be a dick to somebody. <laughs> but right, there, there's, two, there's two kinds of cocky. There's cocky dick, and then there's like cocky, like, you know what? You earn that capital C there. Right, right. Hey, thank you. You know, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, I got you. Justified. Got you. So, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully nobody just tuned in at that part when it's talking about cocky. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. hopefully nobody just tuned in and be like, ooh, what are they talking about? <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, nah, man. So that's that's good. How, now, you are, you 
how many restaurants do you you own or you running right now on in Vegas? That's that's under you. So here, here's the great part. So you know, I'm at the point in my life where I create. You know, we're trying to use our head and not be so physical. Yeah, I'm committed to my job. Okay, I'm not so much of a 401k guy and a bond and a CD guy. So my restaurants that I'm building now are my future. Gotcha. The goal is, you know, and everybody says when they open up a restaurant, they're going to have all these different locations. Yeah. These two restaurants, um, Sinful Subs and Black and Blue Diner, my two babies right now were specifically designed and they're marketed to grow. You know, they are designed to expand. Like when you're in it, like the first question is, where are the other ones? There are no other ones yet. Yeah. They're the first of each. They're the first of the concept where I'm looking to get them both like model homes where we can show good numbers. Yeah. And you know, we want to eventually get people to buy into what it is that we're doing. Okay. So right now I have two restaurants, but here's where I'm fortunate. I've lived in Las Vegas since 89. Okay. I've been scrubbing those dishes since I was a late teen. OK, we meet a lot of people in this industry that we work with in the city that we're in. Yeah. And what happens is you come across some very good people now where in your formula, you know, you cut out a nice salary for a qualified candidate to operate it like you would that understands you, but you empower them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're, they're running it. You know, example, like like I'll create a dish and then I'll tell my guy do whatever you got to do to get us here by following this recipe. And then his skill set comes in and follows what I do. The, the two shops that I have right now, the black and blue diner, I have an amazing operator where I'm fortunate enough to only have to go in there once a week and have two or three calls at night as far as meetings because of the way we designed this concept. As far as sinful subs, I got, I got a partner who really knows, you know, how to run business yeah. where now I'm more of the creative guy who creates them, yeah. makes them tasty. And then we market it and we bring awareness and we get the people to come on in and, you know, hope to God they love what we're doing, Absolutely. you know, and, and it's our job to make sure that they do as much as we can. Yeah. So now what I do at my restaurants, I'm the creator and I market them because if I'm locked inside of a restaurant, I am in serious trouble. I yeah. can't get out there and do other things. Right. Throughout the day, I work my job. It's a you know, it's it's a corporate job, so you have somewhat of the corporate hours. Or you know, somebody may call us late at night. But my main focus, where I'm doing most of my hustle right now, is the job. Gotcha. Um, as far as the restaurants, I'm very fortunate enough to have some great operators within that are helping us take it to the motherland. Right. Oh, congratulations. Definitely. definitely. That's, that's very hard to come by, finding people that match your vision and or exceeds it to where you know that they're going to they gonna try to, you know, run it, you know, you know, perfectly so that you don't have to worry. You come in and like you said, you can you be the the idea guy you know like very well, and, and, and it's like i you know like like when we're putting the equipment in yeah i'm not saying where the oven's gonna go you don't do that to your operator okay the oven's going there and this is how the line looks this is how i want it you don't do that right you go to your operator and say how do you want this kitchen set up so you can take this to the motherland right right you, know? you empower your operators man and and you won't have to be you know old world italian style and live in your restaurant right right Definitely, definitely. So, how was it? Was it challenging finding uh, finding those those type of operators to? No, know? cause I'm in the business. You know, it, it, it's half of it is finding the right operator, and the other half is you know setting a system that's fair for somebody to come in and take. Right. Easy to teach, easy to duplicate. All your ducks in a row. Illustrations of stuff. Good trainings. You know, like. Like you go as simple as you can with the operation so you don't overcomplicate things. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of it's all in the prep of what we do. Yeah. The sauces and the recipes and everything has to be right. Then the execution is just steps that you have to follow that are, you know, that a structure is created for. Definitely, definitely. Okay. So how would, for somebody who wants to grow, we talk food, let's talk food. Um, in the food business, food industry, what you know, they they started, 
getting a flow going. They got clientele. They, you know, customers. They're making the food. It's them. They are the idea person. They're the cook. They're the chef. They're the delivery. They're everything in the beginning stage of their food business. They want to bring on the a team, but they can't get themselves out because they're just so deep in it, so much. So, like I said, two, three hundred orders, and gotta do the menu, gotta send it out, gotta all that crap, all the administrative side plus the cooking. What would be? What would you say should be the f next best thing for them if they want to bring in somebody um, to, I guess take the not take the load off but help you know sure no in a way to take the load off that's that's actually well said you know in the most respectful way that's that's what you're doing you're actually bringing somebody in um so they can take the load off of you and put you in more of a position where you can market your establishment yeah. um you know and and here's the great thing about what you said in that equation if you have all those orders then you have the income to pay someone in the beginning it's a challenge because you know you might have blown the wad in the startup yeah. and you don't quite have the money to pay somebody right. so you know promoting from within is always great you know, because obviously that guy that's doing all the cooking and everything, he's got someone right next to him where you got to break it off. You can't be selfish. You got You can't be afraid to show somebody some stuff and teach them some tricks. Right. It's about that operator setting a nice, clean system, okay, a mm. consistent system. And with that type of revenue coming in, they're going to be able to put up some money to be able to pay a qualified candidate to come in. And okay. the type of person that, you know, you don't hire up here and you don't hire down there. You can't hire an underqualified candidate, unfortunately, you know, right. but you can find an opportunity for, you know, an underqualified candidate. And then you can't hire someone all the way up here because, you know, it could be difficult for that person to adapt to your system. Yeah. There are very many people up here, you know, like I, I throw a bone at myself on this one. I never went into a chef's environment and tried to take over what it was that he was doing. Yeah. I always humbled myself, cleared my head and said, it's going to make me a better operator to adapt to this individual's way of doing things. Then as this person gets to know me and they request suggestions then I can suggest you never want anybody to move faster than you. But if it's one of those things where somebody's doing everything, they got to start promoting from within and they got to take the time to see, you know, who they're, who, who in the operation is a little bit more deserving, a little bit more of a position than where it is that they are now. Like, yeah, the dishwasher's good. Yeah. <laughs> like the dishwasher that couldn't get promoted because I watched too many dishes at a time and they loved it. Yeah. Promote that guy. Promote right. that guy. <laughs> you know? right. Promote okay. from within. Okay. Okay. And I got well, I got a personal question for the uh Okay. It's still it's still it, it's a uh it's in the food, the food, you know, question food industry question. Um mm -hmm. so like I said, my wife, she does meal prepping. And um, she got she she does a lot, and she has all these different types of, um, I guess variations of options you could choose from, for as far as her menu goes. So it's like you got for, you want the shrimp dish, you can get a high carb, you can get a balanced, or you can get low carb. You can get um, double veggies, da da da. And we was just talking, and we was like, she was like, man, for some reason. It just seems like it's mo it's so much like it's taking forever to get the get everything done. I feel like it's the multiple variations. You know, if you if you deal if you got five different dishes, and each dish you can do you can pick four or five different options of each of those dishes, and you have eighteen people who can s select each of those different dishes and variations that would. To me, that feels like that can cause a duration of time to go by because you gotta, you gotta do option A. With A, you got one, two, three, four. Then B, you got one, two, three, four, five. Then C. You know, it's like so many different things. Do you feel like, from your experience and in, in, in your, you know, expertise, do you feel like it's best to like if if one wants to shrink time? to get rid of some of those options, those variations of options to like 
bait, like you know, <laughs> bait, bring it down a bit, <laughs> you know. Like, do you think that should be the best thing or, or what? Because I, I, cause that's my thing. I'm thinking, I got like, you. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, cut down, cut down the options a bit. That should free you up some well, time. <laughs> here's what you got to do strategically, and and you know, when I say people, I throw myself in there. Yeah. You know, forget about me. I'm now I'm the consumer. Okay, forget about the chef. Right. Okay. Now, now I'm the consumer. Okay, <laughs> now I'm the consumer. <laughs> so, he, he, let's let's say this. Okay, when you put options out there, people will take them. Right. It's common, but if you don't put options out there, people aren't going to be looking for the amount of options that you were going to put out there. Meaning, instead of like example, like a burger bar. Yeah. Burger bars are crazy. Omelets, like you, you know, build your own omelet. That's crazy. Yeah. I recommend something like this. So instead of having all these selections, why don't you come up? Why don't you combine a few of these universal ingredients demographically on what people like? And instead of coming up with, you know, choice of this with that, add this or that, and then you could pick this and you could pick that. Create a few like conceptual say it's a bowl yeah say it's a bowl you build your bowl with the rice and a da, 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 yeah. da. come up with instead of all over the place bowl come up with signature bowls that represent each type of person that would order the bowl right you know what i mean because then all the thinking is being done and they'll say i'll take the number three ah. the tahini bowl as opposed to, um, I'll take the bowl with the white rice and uh, give me the green kale and um, I will take the chicken. Because then as an operator, you got all these ingredients that like, you got, you know, don't do that to yourself. <laughs> and don't think in your mind that if you took all of that away, yeah. people would get mad. You know, people want to be able to come in and say, hey, give me the Denver omelet. Give me the Southwestern omelet. Give me the... My operator, he corrected me. I yeah. had omelet station. I had an all over the place omelet station. <laughs> he could have did it. It was a done deal. He goes, he goes, chef. He goes, I think we had the Western, the Denver, the the Mexican omelet. The, and you know what? He was so right. So we limited the fifty option thing into like ten. Yeah. And then we took these other ingredients and we built conceptual items. Gotcha. You know because. If there's something in one of those conceptual items that somebody doesn't want, they'll just say, hold it and give them the opportunity to sub it. If they don't want green peppers and they want red onion instead and red onion is not in that specific thing, swap it out. Definitely. It's still there. And technically, you're still doing the same thing. You're just not advertising a big, confusing roadmap that pretty much puts you in a circle. Right. All right, chef's back. <laughs> 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 Yo, you killed me <laughs> with that. <laughs> Chef's back. Yo, all right, I appreciate. It. Thank you, thank you. Cause that's something. That's something that I feel like my wife would definitely take it, take in, especially because, like I said, I'm the husband. So it's like, eh, I hear, I hear what you're saying, but you don't understand what's going on. But coming from a professional. I'm like, she might be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I'll, I'll let her know that I appreciate try that. Try it for 30 days. You know, try it for 30 days. You, you will see as an operator, it'll be easier for you to wrangle that situation. You right. know what I mean? Because then what happens is you have all these options and you're out of one of them. Now you got to tell someone you ain't, you, you know, you don't have it. Right. That, that's not good. We, we try to avoid that. Definitely. You know? We know it happens, but try to avoid that. Right, right, definitely, definitely. Okay, cool, cool. I appreciate. It. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna let her know that. Uh, I'm sure she's still she's still working the kinks out, you know, and and trying to figure find her her rhythm. So I feel like that might help. Um, cause I always said the more the more options you give people, the more they're gonna run with it. <laughs> you know. It's, no, they will. It's one of those things. If it's there, they'll they'll want it. If it's more structured, they'll want that. Like you, people don't know what you have by, you know, what you may have had. Like, yeah. what you put there is what they're going to see. So it's up to you to control the chaos. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Man, that's that's deep. That's deep. Oh, hey, yeah. 
Tell them about wrestling, man. What's your thoughts on wrestling? Well, I got many thoughts on wrestling, but <laughs> what part of wrestling do you want to talk about? <laughs> I didn't know a little, uh, little wrestling action was coming into the mix. I didn't know either. <laughs> well, that's because Walt also does the photos for the wrestlers. He did tell so me that. while he's on here, while he's doing nothing, he's... You know, taking some of the main wrestlers that everybody that watches wrestling knows and, you know, he talks to them like we're having conversations right here and he does their promo shots and their, their billboards and, you know, while he's doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what was... Wrestling, it's, it's getting good again. Bottom line, it's yeah. getting good again. Yeah, yeah, I got a... Fr it's actually funny because I actually got a friend who, um... He set out to become a professional wrestler. I think he'd been in it for four or five years now. We actually uh, we was doing jujitsu together back in the day, and he just disappeared. And then come to find out, he's um in in Maryland is a wrestling um is a wrestling uh, I guess business called Ring of Honors or something. Um, yeah, all right, right. So yeah, so he's he, he's under Shane Taylor Promotion named Pro. His name is Pro. I guess his wrestling name is called Pro Prolific or yeah, Prolific, and he's with a guy named Sh uh, Chaos. I don't know. <laughs> I probably... like some wrestling names. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I mean, just the sheer fact of he's doing it, and I'm watching a little bit. I'm like, okay, cool. And then Walt told me that he dealt with a lot of wrestlers, had to fit, had to feed a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> he was bad. Like, he some told me some of the greatest ones, though. Like not just not just like you know those guys, but those guys. Right, right. <laughs> look, look, I'm glad. Uh, I'm I'm glad to know just just know y'all. I'm glad I don't know no That's big right. wrestlers yet. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> my, well, my, see, what Walt didn't say is like when wrestling opens back up again, he's gonna take us to a show and introduce us to some of the guys, you know. Uh, the girls. <laughs> well, well, yeah, Walt. Hook us up. Shoot. Uh, well, first of all, I like to say, look, I want to thank you again, my man, to uh, uh, dropping some knowledge on us, inspiring a lot of our viewers. You know, we had a lot of people tuning in, which was amazing, which is always amazing. Um, and just like I said, just to learn more about you, I really appreciate you, man. That this it, it motivated me more because, um, like I said, doing running the business here, um, and trying to keep it growing, keep it going, you know, and then hearing your story is like, okay, yeah, all right, you know, I know this, but it's, it's great hearing if you know, hearing somebody else's story, you know, so. Yeah, I really appreciate it, you know, uh, for taking the time out once again, for blessing us on the show. I'm, first of all, I'm excited to come over there. Um, it's only Can't a wait. skip away, you know. <laughs> Man, I'm excited to come down there, you know, because, again, in North Carolina, I just got to jump on a quick flight, you know, up to you guys. I usually, one of the stopovers is in Baltimore when I was going to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I want this world to get rolling again because – I got some stuff to do in your neck of the woods, man. We got some people to take care of. Okay, I'll yeah. I'll the out there for you. <laughs> I bet you have one of those, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. You did the billboard for the helicopter people. That close. Everything so, else. What is that undercover guy? He is the undercover guy. really is. Still, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure him out. Even my wife is like, how does he know these people? I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like, he's like John Wick. <laughs> yeah, he is. That's, that's a good one. You yeah. know? Oh, God, well. <laughs> I was like, lives right around the corner from me. And I'm like, I like, I always say this all the time to him. I'm like, what are you still doing in Maryland for? Like, all these things you can do and all this t connections. Why are you in Maryland? He still won't tell me. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, okay, there's something about you. <laughs> so, yeah, he's <laughs> he Batman. I'm glad, I'm glad we know him and we're on, you know, he's on our side. Yeah. I guess that's the best way to say it. Yeah. Yeah, he's Bruce Wayne during the day and he's Batman he at night. He really is. <laughs> oh. Well, hey, whatever you need. <laughs> yeah. 
Look, I don't care. <laughs> you need to ride to work, I got you. <laughs> you know, but man, Vic, it's been a pleasure, my brother. Like I said, I'm excited. I can't wait to come over. I'm gonna bring my wife. I know she's she'd be excited to see you. Um, she's probably watching the Food Network, trying to you know you know see how you know how things went. You know, with you season on the show. seven. Season Food seven. Network Star Season 7. Yeah, so a quick little rundown before we go. Food Network Star Season 7, all 12 episodes plus the reunion. Uh, we did 16 late-night chef fights on the FYI channel, two NBC food fighters, and we we're almost near, damn near 20 bar rescues and yeah. a few little odds and ends on the CW here and there. You know, I got to tell you, very blessed being able to go on people's shows yeah. And I think it's almost time. Um, it's almost time to get in that lane where your boy here needs to shoot something of his own. I think. I think it's about that time. So, man, yeah. hell yeah, yeah, hell it's about yeah. that time. Hell yeah, I mean, shoot, it's only an opportunity, and you got nothing but time. So, let me share. I'll, I'll be down. Yeah, I'll, I'll do security. I mean, I do security now, so I'll do security. <laughs> shit, that's <is> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> do do the shit outside of Maryland. <laughs> True. Excellent. Definitely. Brother, thank you. Oh, thank thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, I was looking forward to this. You guys are awesome. Walt, my good buddy, and everybody he introduces me to becomes a good buddy as well. So, brother, I can't wait to see you and your wife down here in Vegas. And who knows, you may be seeing me down there first because – Things start opening up again, and I go to North Carolina. I owe Walt like five steak dinners now, so you know you might want to get in on one of those with us. Oh, uh, look, I'm right around the corner, so I'll be there. I will be there. I'm gonna shoot you my number two in case Walt want to hide all the steaks, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Nice. Shoot. Thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you, my man. And Walt, of course, you're the man that brings us all together. So thank you, brother. Uh, and like I say, you know, this is, was it 2021? I don't know what year it is. I don't know. But 2021, I guess. I don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're going to do some damage. We're going to do some damage this year. So so I'm very excited. Oh, please send me your um, – DM me your size. Um, I want to send you some stuff. Yeah. You know, so you mean to tell me the next time we do this, I get to have your gear on? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Shoot, it's nothing but love here. I got shoot. I'll send you what you know. I'll make you some. I'll make you a fresh hot one and send them stuff over. I love your fresh gear, man. That'll be an honor. Hey, this is Walt. This is Walt. I just look. I just think of the clothes to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> mm, dig it. <laughs> so. So yeah, please shoot me that stuff. You know your um, address. I'll have that joint sent over this week. Um, and like I say, I just appreciate you for taking the time, my brother. All right, and your food gifts will be here waiting for you when you get here. Me first, Walt. I said I will <laughs> fight you. <laughs> y'all take care. Have a blessed night, my brothers. I appreciate y'all. All right, guys. All right, man. Thank you. Love have you, a chef. good one. Definitely. Love you, Walt. All right, man.